I'm getting ready to go on my walk, but I promise you guys that if I figured out how I could maintain my weight on Seroquel or what worked for me, I'd let you know. I have absolutely, I have to absolutely wearing no makeup right now. Okay, it's going to be hard to sum this up in 15 minutes, okay? But I've discovered something that I feel I'm obligated to share. Okay, the key is healthy liver. Healthy liver. When you take care of your liver, your weight goes down. If you don't take care of your liver, your weight goes up. <laughs> so if you're gaining a lot of weight on Seroquel, it could be partly because of a sluggish liver. And um, I'm getting a lot of my information from this book here, Encyclopedia of Natural Medicine, written by these naturopathic physicians. And also from this book right here, another, I've had these, these books for like 20 years. I've practically read them cover to cover. Anyways. Um, if you're gaining a lot of weight on Seroquel, it could be partly because of a sluggish liver. And I believe that one of the ways that Seroquel works is by removing toxins from the cells in the entire body, including the brain. Toxicity in the brain cells can lead to mental illness. My theory is that if you gain a lot of weight on Seroquel, this means that your body is loaded with toxins in your cells. So that when the Seroquel releases those toxins from your cells, if your liver is not working properly, your body redistributes those toxins into the fat cells. You see, that's the safest place in the body to store toxins, so that's where the body prefers to put toxins. So that's why you're getting fat, partly. So Seroquel may be taking toxins out of like some of the nerve cells in the brain, maybe muscle cells, digestive cells, etc., and putting those toxins into the fat cells where the toxins do less damage to the body. You're saying, why isn't it? That's because your liver's not working right. <laughs> your liver shouldn't be doing that. If your liver is healthy, and then it processes those toxins and dumps them into the bile, which is released into the intestines. The liver filters toxins out of the blood, and Seroquel dumps a lot of the toxins from the body cells into the blood. This is actually good. You don't want your body to be loaded with toxins. But if your liver's not healthy, then the bacteria and other toxins just go right back into the general circulation. They go right back into your blood because your liver's not doing its job. So if your body is loaded with toxins, it needs more fat cells to store all the toxins. And so people on Seroquel gain weight if they have toxicity in their cells. The liver also sends bile to your intestines which is another way to get rid of toxins through the bile. But if your diet lacks fiber, the bile won't be bound in your feces very well, and the bile will be reabsorbed into the bloodstream. The liver actually changes the chemical composition of toxins during its phase one and phase two detoxification pathways, using enzymes to neutralize toxins by actually changing their chemical composition. But these can go wrong if your liver's not, liver's not working right. Smaller, frequent meals. Don't pig out. It's tough on the liver. Physical activity, like walking, maybe 30 minutes a day, is needed for good blood circulation, which helps the body to get rid of the toxins. To ensure your phase one is working well, you should eat plenty of brassica family foods, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, vitamin D-rich foods, nutritional yeast, whole grains. I, I, like, whole, I like brown rice. Vitamin C-rich foods, peppers, cabbage, and tomatoes. Citrus foods, oranges and, tanger oranges and tangerines, not grapefruit. I, grapefruit, I think, hinders phase one uh, pathway. Phase one can be hindered by benzodiazepines, that's halcyon, centrax, librium, valium, etc., antihistamines, which are used to treat to allergies, simetidine and other stomach acid secretion blocking drugs used for stomach ulcers, ketoconazole, sulfaphenazole, and the foods naringenin from grapefruit juice, there's your grapefruit problem, curcumin from the spiced turmeric, capsaicin from red chili peppers, and eugenol from clove oil, also aging and toxins from inappropriate bacteria in the intestines also inhibit phase one. Now I'm not telling you not, not, not take these things, you need to check with your doctor because everybody's body's different, but you just be aware that if you are taking these things, they could be inhibiting your phase one detoxification pathways in your liver, which may explain why your liver is not working right. Phase two is very important, and if it's not working well, it can't complete what phase one did, and may cause the release of phase one compounds that are even more toxic than what the toxins were when, they, when you got them in the first place into your cells. 
Phase two conjugates glutathione. But it can't do this if you have a deficiency of glutathione. Dietary glutathione is found in fresh fruits and vegetables, cooked fish and meat, and food is the best way to get it. The following foods are healthy for phase two. Brassica family foods, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, limonene containing foods, that's citrus peel, dill wheat oil, and caraway oil. Fish oils and limonene containing foods like citrus, dill, caraway. If you are selenium deficient, vitamin B2 deficient, glutathione deficient, and zinc deficient or on, or on a low protein diet, are folic acid or vitamin B12 deficient, or are taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin, or are vitamin B5 or C deficient, you are inhibiting your phase two. Your liver can't work if, you don't, if you're deficient in those areas. That means take a good multivitamin. This is what I take. Make sure it's got GMP certification on the back of your probably your vitamins probably junk and it's not doing anything for you. Uh, right up here. That's there it is. It's called GMP. Make sure that's stamped on there somewhere. If not, your vitamins probably not being absorbed. Um, uh, anyways, uh, so phase two is very important. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Okay. A lot of people have an overactive phase one. So the spiced turmeric, which is found in curry, is considered good for the liver. In fact, I had really bad liver problems. I think I even had gallstones, and I took a, I added turmeric to everything, and I followed this diet, and I solved my problem. I mean, I was so sick, I had to call out for three days at my job because of my liver problems. Nobody on Seroquel should take alcohol because alcohol is bad for the liver. Um, stay away from sh excess sugars. Read labels. No sucrose, fructose, glucose, stuff like that in excess. Saturated fats are not good for your liver. Those are basically like from pork, red meats, uh, especially if you get a high fat version of those. Try to go for leaner meats. Um, the following foods are especially good for the liver. Lemons. It's good to add like a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice to your spring water for breakfast. Limes, brown rice, whole grains. I, I happen to be gluten-free. Cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. Fish. I like salmon, tuna, sardines, but fish oil, fishes are good. It, um, if you're B12 deficient, that's going to be a problem. So I, I happen to be B12 deficient. So I take some lean red meat. I like beef. I'd like, I'm going to take dark meat, chicken, and turkey, and fish for B12. Leafy green vegetables, turnip and collard greens, spinach, excellent for the liver, fresh kale, fresh berries, or frozen kale, or frozen berries, uh, artichokes, Brussels sprouts, fresh garlic, fresh onions. I, I, I get garlic, and I try to have a little bit of fresh garlic. I make a, a lemon garlic dressing for my, um, for my broccoli salad. And I put a little bit of olive oil in there and some rice vinegar in there. It's delicious and very good for your liver. Uh, carrots, avocados, apples, especially Granny Smith on an empty stomach. Um, walnuts, asparagus, cabbage, salad, tomatoes. And go online and research. A healthy liver means toxins are leaving your body. Less toxins for your fat cells. And you lose weight. And I believe... The weight gain in Seroquel is caused because Seroquel goes through your body, releasing toxins from all of your cells, which is why it's cured me of my yeast infection, because that's what I believe anyway. Um, and it also does it to the brain cells. So you've got nothing to lose by having a liver-healthy diet. Even if you disagree with the science behind what I'm saying about Seroquel, you have got nothing to lose by having a liver-healthy diet and everything to gain with the possibility of losing weight on top of that. So that's what works for me, folks. Uh, exercise, you know, and yeah, I'm getting ready to go for my walk. But this is what I have discovered. I, when I went to my mother's, um, I lost like five pounds. And I thought, what was I doing then? And then yesterday, I gained, regained about three all at once. And I thought, ah, I thought when I was at my mother, I had lemon juice and garlic with broccoli and all these liver healthy foods. I had fish every day. I was getting at least three tablespoons of lemon juice a day. I thought, aha, my liver was happy. And I was also eating, I was getting away from my low protein diet. And so 
when my liver's happy, my weight goes down. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing this. So the, the key to staying healthy on Saraquel is to have a healthy liver. <laughs> that is my conclusion. Um, I'm, I'm at a very healthy weight right now, and I probably don't need to go. I'm about 131, 132, a 5'7", small bones, not bad. I probably don't need to go lower than this. I might if I keep taking care of my liver, but, I, but you know, you got to have your nutrition or your liver's not healthy. So make sure you take a good multivitamin. You know, make sure you're getting all your, you're eating well-balanced meals, healthy liver, healthy weight. That's what I believe.